Primordial Radio. Do you ever look at some of the uh, the footage from guys in the 80s? Like, you look at, like, the likes of Motley Crue and, you know, all the bands who, you know, they were partying all the time. I sort of, Especially now that I'm no longer 24, I, I look at that and go, how the shit were you doing that and staying up all night and running about on stage? I'd have fallen over and had a coronary. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, it's funny, like, I'm I'm such a homebody now. You know, I'm on the road all the time, but I get off stage. Let's say I get off stage at 1030. You know, I help, you know, my guys load out on my solo tour you know, we're all in the trailer, packing stuff, rolling cables, putting stuff in boxes, putting it in the trailer. That takes an hour or so. And then I'm usually asleep by midnight, you know, it's because I, I wake up early. I've always got a ton of emails to do, you know, got to hit the gym, do so many things before the show the next day. We play six, seven shows a week on my solo tour. So I, I physically couldn't do it. I, I couldn't, you know, I don't drink anymore. But even if I did, I couldn't stay up like that if I tried because I have so much to do, you know, mm. those I think a big difference is musicians in 2021 and beyond, you know, we need to be entrepreneurs as well as being musicians. There's so many responsibilities, the social media, the content, you know, the press and interviews, uh, you know, signature products. You know, I have so many different, I have my online guitar lessons. I have a Patreon page. I have a fitness challenge that I do. Like there's so many different facets to being a musician and entrepreneur in these days, like you just can't do it. You know, in, in the eighties, you're talking about Motley Crue partying and stuff. They weren't worrying about content for their TikTok or their Instagram. <laughs> you know, they're just living life. That is one of the ways in which the world has changed, hasn't it? They went on tour. They got wasted, did a show back on the bus. And that was it. Oh, I've got, yeah. got a radio interview to do. Oh, okay, fine. Right. And nowadays, I mean, let's talk about social media because you have got a great social media presence. In fact, yeah. I, I, while I was um, sat here waiting for you to, you know, log on to the Zoom chat, I opened up my Instagram. The very first post, Hurricane Nita. I'm like, that's weird. How much, how much time would you say that you dedicate to, you know, building and maintaining your your social followings? Um, you know, not as much as I could. I think um, it's it's so important in this day and age. You know, it's it's so interesting because I started touring just at the advent of social media when it was just MySpace, and you know, and now there's Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, you know, uh, Twitter, all these different things and different people on different ones, and you know, and still to this day, you know, I've got a half a million people on my Instagram, uh, another, you know. 300, 400,000 on my Facebook, this and that. And still, you know, every single day I'll, you know, I post our tour dates. I say, we're going to come here. And then someone will say, oh, I can't believe you were just in Brooklyn and I missed it. You know, like you still can't get to everybody. It's, there's not really an elegant solution yet, I think. Well, the, there is an elegant solution, but we abandoned it. It's called websites. It's like, I have a True. website. All the details are there. The problem is with the all the info being on the website is that people still don't read it. <laughs> you can put it all there. Uh, for example, when I, I have a VIP package that I sell for the shows, uh, the meet and greet, and the very first thing it says is, please read the entire description for all the information that you will need. And I, I took an hour to write this description myself. And I thought of, you know, I went through every question I had been asked on previous tours and I put every piece of information that I could find in the description. So you can't buy it until you see this block of text. And then every single day, my band sees me just like howl at my email because it says, what time is it? How do I get in? What, like, what's the protocol? I haven't gotten anything in the mail. Da, 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 da. And it's like every single question I, I've, I have not yet been asked a question in my email that is not already in the description of the package, but people don't read. And I think that's why, that's why we have to do social media instead of websites. Uh, are you an iPhone user? I am. Have you read Apple's terms and conditions? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I knew exactly where that was going. No, I have not read any of it. You know, might might be that human centipede episode of South Park for all I know. Yes. You know, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and it's but it is but I'm also not gonna email Apple and ask them about it. Fair this point. is the difference. Yes. You know, like and it's the same thing, you know, I, every day before the VIP, I send out an email for the following day's show saying 
this is your show. This is the start time. This is when you check in. This is who you ask for. You do not need a physical pass. Your your name will be on our list. Yeah. You don't have to bring anything. Your photos after the VIP will be posted at this link. And then every single day, the next day it says, hey, I was at the meet and greet last night. How do I get my photo? <laughs> And I oh. and I have to very nicely respond back. It is in the the link is in the email that you just responded to. Primordial Radio.